Welcome back to 33-year-old Boomer, ranting in a snow biome in Minecraft. Oh, oh, guys, I'm in Minecraft! Ooh. Is web dev cooked? Let's talk about it. So, Jonathan Blow has this infamous clip where someone said that they have a JavaScript job and they just do sort of menial tasks every day. And what should they do about it? And he said, listen, if your job is just doing JavaScript and doing menial stuff, you should probably find a better job. Because especially when you're young, the tasks that you do, the things that you learn, will dramatically influence who you become later on. And it would appear that if all you know now is JavaScript and React, that may not be enough. That may have been sufficient a while ago where there was a shortage of developers or at least all these big companies believed that there was that they need so many more programmers because of the lockdowns and everyone's going to stay inside forever and we just need more and more programmers. Uh, it looks like they may have been wrong about that. And so they overhired a bunch of programmers and... Now we're in a situation where there seems to be an oversaturation. Not of good programmers, but just of programmers. I've talked about that in a previous video, which went a little bit semi-viral, at least for the size of my channel. And I've received a lot of interesting comments about it. Most people seem to agree that, that the market is contracting, that companies just overhired far too many developers and now the market is shrinking so what does that mean for you and how can you protect yourself against this the solution unironically is that you should get cracked as the cool kids say nowadays you should just get better at programming if all you're doing is javascript and react and front end and that's it if you don't understand back end if you don't understand how computers work, if you've never programmed in C or even looked at assembly, I'm not saying you should be able to write assembly. I'm just saying that maybe you should be able to read assembly because what that signals to engineers is, hey, this person's interested. They know their stuff. And just like my previous video, I suspect that the industry is returning to a place where the, uh, the mega nerds, the mega autists, are going to dominate the market once again. The people who are actually interested. Now, if you're asking me, hey, why should I learn C? Why should I learn assembly? Why should I learn low-level stuff? Why should I learn how, all, how computers actually work? I mean, I'm, I'm just doing... Isn't this beautiful, by the way? Isn't, isn't this absolutely gorgeous? Anyway, not, not me, the, uh, the background. Why should you learn all of this? Why, is this? why is this relevant? Why should a front-end engineer learn any of this? Let me put it this way. Let's say you're 11, and one day you get a letter from, it says from Minerva McGonagall, from Albus Dumbledore. It's an invitation to Hogwarts, School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Now, you'd be very excited, wouldn't you? You get to be a wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. I'm a, I'm a what? <laughs> Top tier acting. If you got that invite and you got to go... Let's get in the light there. Isn't that pretty? There we go. And you got to go to Hogwarts. Once you got, once you got to King's Cross, you got on the train... And now you're you're at Hogwarts. You're being in. You're being. Uh, you're in, you're in that carriage that apparently doesn't have any horses, but it actually does. Spoiler alert. And you get to class. Wouldn't you devour everything? Wouldn't you devour every piece of information that those wizard nerds gave you? Wouldn't you want to understand everything about wizarding and being a a, a wizard or a which, of course you would. You would learn everything, you know? You, you, you probably read the books when you were a kid, and you thought, 
Why, why are they complaining about homework? They're learning to be wizards. Isn't that beautiful? Well, that's what computers are. That, that's the closest thing that we have to magic, is computers, is programming. You have this Turing complete machine, which really only understands very basic things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and it can hold some memory. And you can, you can manipulate the way that this machine works. You can exploit it in a good way, hopefully, to do the things that you want it to do. That's magic. You're taking magic out of the air with your wand and you're weaving it and you're turning it into something that is useful to you. And so if you were really into computers, that's how you would feel about it. And hey, maybe you're not. Maybe you're just not that into computers. Maybe you got into it because you wanted easy money. And the reality now, it would appear, is that if you want to continue doing this you're just gonna have to get interested or don't just you know you can you can do something else and i'm not being dismissive of human suffering there will be a lot of it coming soon especially once the ai, AI bubble pops what i but what i am saying is that you should be aware of this reality and you should plan accordingly Things are going to get rough, maybe for a while, maybe forever. Who knows? And if you want to thrive, if you want to do well, if you want to, to have a nice life, you should seriously consider getting better. What should you get better at? Well, there's two things, actually. One is gain a better understanding of how computers actually work. Understand how memory works, understand how CPU works, understand how CPUs work, because this will just make you a better developer overall. Wow, that light is, that light is haunting. I know, this isn't fair. You were promised something and it's not being delivered. That's the case for everyone. Um, everyone feels cheated right now. You know, most of us millennials uh, we were told, go to uni, study hard, you'll get a good job, and you'll do great. And that's going to be the case forever. And whilst your parents had probably had the best of intentions giving you that advice, it's just not true, is it? And so you could get mad, you could get really salty, or you could just embrace stoicism. You could understand, and by the way, this is this is POV. You're my newborn baby. Goo goo gaga. I'm holding you right now. I'm, I'm holding you as we walk into the forest. Embrace stoicism. Understand the fact that some things are within your control and others are not. Whether you get that job, it's not within your control. Whether that person that you really like, who you think is very attractive, they may not find you to be attractive back. That is not within your control. What is within your control is how you perceive reality, is how you think of things. You decide whether something is good or bad. This crisis that's going on right now with computers and programmers, is it a bad thing or is it a good thing? Maybe it's a good thing. You decide if it's a bad thing or a good thing. How is it a good thing? Maybe this is finally the thing that pushes you to just get better, to just become way better at your craft. Maybe this is what will push you to become an Olympic level programmer, to understand all these things, to be really, really good at something other than Minecraft. And I get it, Minecraft's pretty cool. I, I bought it back in 2009. It's a pretty good game. But maybe this is your chance. Or maybe you were just never into computers that much. Maybe this is an opportunity for you to find something that you actually do like and that you want to be really good at. If you want to learn more about Stoicism, this is the ad part. You can click away. I have a repo on my GitHub where I cover a bunch of books that I've read 
showing off mogging all of you literally. And two of the books are about Stoicism. Uh, there is the Enchiridion of Epictetus, beautiful book, very concise, very big-brained. It, will, it literally saved me. A fantastic book. And the other one is um, Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. That, one's, that one has more to do with death. Um, it's about an, a Roman emperor who realized that he was dying. And so he started journaling in an effort to convince himself that death was okay and really not that big a deal. TM. That's basically what most of the book is about. It's, uh, it's a reason and arguments as to why his impending death and him no longer being like the emperor of the known world, why that was actually okay. And if that was good enough for a Roman emperor, maybe that's good enough for you and me.